don't judge me. It's been a long day. And don't judge me for what I'm about to tell you. This is the new Lou. This is Betty Lou. And she's our new toilet. Now, right there is the galley. Right there is the bed. Right here is the living area. And right here is the bathroom. So, I guess you say we live in an open concept camper. Um, it's just my wife and I, and um, we usually use the facilities at wherever we're at, usually state parks, but once in a while, this can come in handy. And we used to have a Lugabaloo, and um, that worked really good. But this, hopefully, is definitely going to be a step up. This is a sort of composting toilet. Um, <clears throat> I don't really call it that because you, you remove the stuff and it's not really composted. It's just bagged. And it also has a diverter that collects the urine to keep it separate from the solid waste. Now, <clears throat> all good composting toilets have that. Something else that it has uh, to help is it has a negative pressure fan in it to keep the smell in here and moving outdoors never comes out into the room and it also has a check valve but it's a check valve not for water but for odor a check valve only allows water to travel in one direction well this only allows odor to travel in one direction and this in case is the odor of urine we'll talk about that later and it also has a built-in electric self-cleaning system so here it is upcoming is the build later on in the video we'll demo it well i'm not going to demo demo it we're just going to take a look at it look at the inside see exactly how it ended up and then see how it works all that stuff works in it so enjoy so we've got a bucket a toilet seat and a diverter and a really nice maple board so it's time to make the top So here's my pattern, and it's too bad to have to waste all of this wood just to get this thin ring, but um, it's the easiest way to do it, and I'll, I'll eventually use this center plate someplace. So we have to glue this up. my edge here but I am going to be covering this with a quarter inch of plywood plus a veneer so I need to take and make an inside edge that I will be cutting and not easy following one line while drawing the other And these are the stays on the inside. Um, 
that will hold the thing up. Just made from uh, spruce 2x4. Air sander and 60 grit paper takes it down to the line pretty good. how it will look. The diverter is right here. Doesn't look like much now, but give it time. Now, I've got this upside down, and um, I'm about to uh, put the pocket hole screws in for the top of it. Um, the goal at the end is to wrap it in plywood. This is a tiny piece, but wrap the whole thing in plywood that I can bend because I've curved it. I just put it through the table saw and cut through about three quarters of the thickness, and this is the goal. Here's the front. These haven't been screwed in yet, but these will be recessed about a quarter of an inch. And then this will bend around and be glued to these. All the way from top to bottom. That's the goal anyway. It works in my head. For those of you who have never used pocket holes before, um, it's one of those tools that you don't regret having bought, like some tools that you buy. I use it all the time. They work great. Okay, so here's my 
tube to hold the urine that I'm making. It's 10 inches tall and four inches in diameter. And I wanted to know how much that was. So the volume uh, for the um, for a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height, 3.14. Uh, the radius is two inches, square that would be times 10, four times 10, which would be pi times 40 which is 125.6 cubic inches. And um, I asked Siri how many liters that was. Two point, li well, just two liters. And um, that would be like a two liter soda bottle, which in my mind is quite a bit. My urine container is gonna have two caps on it. And on the top is going to be a half inch a piece of PVC to connect the diverter tube to. And on the bottom is going to be a half inch piece coming off the side to act as a drain. And I'll be able to drain it outdoors into a bottle instead of lifting this out to carry it out. Now I'm thinking, is that more work? Not really. I'm gonna lift this out and carry it into the woods or to a bathroom to dump. Um, if it was a bottle, but this way there'll be a valve in the back and I'll drain it into a bottle. So it really won't be that much different, except that I won't have to take this out. This is going to be a half inch pipe, but, um, the hole has to be larger than that because the outside diameter is bigger than a half inch. So I had to find a drill that was about the right size and I have a step drill so it worked good. Well, there it is, kind of like a caged animal. I am going to be putting a tube here for the urine diverter to go into, and then there will be a tube coming out there um, to drain it, which will be underneath the camper. Well, if you can picture this, here we have the outlet for draining the urine. There's going to be a tube going right around. And then this is going to be under the trailer right here and stick up at uh, just about an inch above in here. This valve will be under the trailer. So this will be right about here. But remember, only this much will be sticking out up here. The rest of this will be under the trailer. There will be a tube connecting the two. And I'll be able to go outside to the edge of the trailer, turn the valve, and drain it. And like I said, it all works in my head.
Now comes the very tedious job of kerfing this. And by kerfing means I need to cut slots along the entire bottom edge of this so I can wrap it um, around the, the toilet that I'm making. Um, these slots are going to be about maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch apart. And um, we'll actually thin out the plywood in some areas so it can be bent. Let me show you. I've got the blade set very low so that when it cuts through, it cuts through about, oh, about 80% of it. Well, I have spared you the couple of hours that that took to do. now have a wraparound piece of plywood. I've got a, my pin nailer, which shoots, um, this one is three quarter inch, uh, 23 gauge nails, which about the size of a small needle. So they come out pretty good um, and cleanly, um, but they'll hold. And what I've done is I've cut a strip um, of my side off because I, I made it too wide on purpose. So once I cut it down, I have this piece that I can put on um, to act as a guide for the router. Let me put this on and I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. As you can see in this simple diagram, there's a washer motor and the fan motor. The washer motor has a momentary switch where the fan motor just has an off and on switch.
and uh, it's got a shiny look because it's wet but uh, it'll be good that's the last one so when you go to sit on it this is what it looks like it's got a place for the solid waste here this is where the urine goes good to keep them separated and the reason for that is that solid waste smells when you're doing it because it's gas from the human body but afterwards it really doesn't smell that much what really smells gives that bathroom or toilet smell is the urine because it gives off an ammonia compound and uh, particularly after it starts to get rancid so collecting it separately from the solid waste allows the waste bacteria to work and the urine to be contained. Now, I'll show you what this is for in a minute. Let's take this out. And take a look at the inside. And I'm going to pull the bucket out. And it's made. So what you're looking at here, and if you saw the build, is the urine collector here and the hose leads to it and then it goes out down here to the outside and I'll show you that in a minute. There's also the fan which draws the air out and the only place it can come in because this chamber is pretty much sealed is underneath the toilet seat so the air is diverting this way and going out. Now all you need to do is create a slight negative pressure drawing the air in. It doesn't have to be a big wind, just a slight negative pressure. And it keeps the air going in this direction instead of in this direction. And there's a hole at the bottom and it goes outside. Right here is a pump that is a windshield washer pump and it leads to a bottle that will have water with a little bit of vinegar in it because the vinegar will neutralize the ammonia to some extent and it'll wash the basin by the way we're going to have some uh, bags to collect the compost here to collect the waste that's going to be in the bucket okay so Let's put some water in here. So, water goes in here and collects in the chamber that we made. And I just want to show you the check valve. It's a pen ping pong ball. So that urinate in here. water goes down and then the ping pong ball acts as a check valve to hold the uh, odor in now when you're done there are two spigots here with a switch right here and if you push it So let's take a look right here. I've got a gallon jug with a soft hose running up to a valve. And I'm gonna open up the valve. And the urine from the diverter will run out. Into. collector pull it out put a cover on it and we're ready to go now what else I can do here is if we're in a real boondocking area before we leave I can just open this up because it'll be in the woods anyway and you can dump this in the woods otherwise I'll um, carry it to a uh, 
you know, the bathroom or wherever the dump station is and dump the urine in there. Um, if the woods isn't very occupied, I'll walk out into it and uh, spread it out there. Um, it's just urine and water, nothing dangerous. I think if I had to do this again down here, and I think I might actually do it, is I would put a longer PVC pipe, put the valve down in this area so I can reach it more easily instead of having to get on my back. And um, I think I might actually make that addition. Why a laundry soap bottle? Well, it has that, that cool pour spout on it that the hose also hugs. And it's not like a milk jug, it's clear. So when you walk into the bathroom, people can say, hmm, is that lemonade or vinegar? Mm, they know what it is. This is an opaque bottle and that's kind of what I'm looking for. And one last little thing. Um, since making uh, the other parts of this video, I realized that the water um, kind of bound up, got airlocked while I was while it was going down, so it didn't go down very good at all, unless the valve was open underneath. So what I did was I put um, an air vent in it. Let me show it to you. A small plastic tube, and I had a plastic um, rubber hose collector right there. It goes up and just right in here. So if the urine should start to overflow this container, you'll see it in here before it comes out of this tube. So the air can now come out as the urine is going in, but the fan will still suck it outside.